Welcome back to another YouTube video. It's your tutor, D Shop. Today, I'll be continuing the aspects of biochemistry series by looking at a ubiquitous compound. You find it in your cupboards, your refrigerators, and today in my lab. Whether it's healthy or unhealthy, this compound is a major source of energy for many living organisms. Stay tuned. Carbohydrates are a diverse group of compounds. You can find them in the foods that you eat, stored in plants as starch, and stored in our liver and muscle cells as glycogen. Today, I'll be demonstrating the ways how you can classify carbohydrates, the two major reactions of carbohydrates, and lastly, I'll be looking at the structure and functions of the five major carbohydrates that you must know for your upcoming CAPE examination. Now, there are three main ways to classify carbohydrates. We can classify them according to the number of sugar constituents. We can classify them according to the number of carbon atoms. And we can also classify them according to the functional group present. Let me exemplify this. Classifying according to the number of sugar constituents. Starting with monosaccharide. Mono means one. Saccharide means sugar. So therefore, a monosaccharide would be made up of one sugar molecule. Here is an example of a monosaccharide, glucose. Secondly, disaccharide. Di means two, saccharide means sugar. So a disaccharide will be made up of two sugar molecules. And here is a prime example, sucrose, being made up of glucose and fructose, connected via glycosidic bond. Thirdly, the polysaccharides. Poly means many, saccharide means sugar. Therefore, polysaccharides are made up of many repeated sugar units, whether linearly or branched. Classifying according to the number of carbon atoms, three carbon atoms gives you a triose, four gives you a tetrose, five gives you a pentose, and six gives you an hexose. Hmm. Give me an example of a hexose that we've been working with since third form. Glucose. That's right. Glucose, C6, H12O6. Six carbon atoms is a hexose. You get it, right? Now, as stated before, some sugars, they have a functional group in their skeleton. For example, glucose has an aldehyde group in its structure. So we would say glucose is an aldose or an aldohexose. Another example is fructose. There is a ketone functional group. So we say fructose is a ketose or a ketohexose. During condensation, monosaccharides are joined covalently to form disaccharides or polysaccharides with the liberation of water. Conversely, hydrolysis involves the breaking of the glycosidic bond between the two monosaccharide molecules. Let's talk about the five important examples of carbohydrates that you must know for your examination. Yes, glucose, sucrose, glycogen, starch, and cellulose. Let's start with glucose. Glucose is synthesized in green plants during the process photosynthesis. And recall, during photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water react to form glucose and oxygen. 
glucose is the major source of energy for many living organisms and it can exist in its straight chain form or its ring form today i'll be looking at two examples or two isomers rather of glucose here we have the alpha form and for the alpha form what happens is the hydroxyl group is located below the first carbon for the beta form the hydroxyl group is located above the first carbon and this is a common past paper question so note that one moving on to the disaccharide here i have sucrose and recall the disaccharide is made up of two sugar units so here for sucrose i have a glucose unit and a fructose unit joined together by a glycosidic bond or link one important thing for you to note about this compound is that sucrose is a non-reducing sugar unlike glucose which is a reducing sugar recall there's a glycosidic bond formation here and that hinders its favorability for participating in reactions come on over with me to the polysaccharides starting with glycogen glycogen is a polymer of alpha glucose what do i mean by that i mean there are many alpha glucose monomers in glycogen structure covalently linked via glycosidic bonds or linkages however there are two important things that you must note for your examination firstly in glycogen structure Alpha glucose molecules are linearly linked via alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkages. And it is also branched via alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkages. How is this advantageous? Well, when there is an excess amount of glucose in our bodies, it is converted to glycogen. Now, glycogen is stored in our liver and our muscle tissues. And instead of being linear to, to both linear and highly branched, that means we can store more glycogen in our tissues, meaning we'll have more energy. Next, we have starch. And starch is also a polymer of alpha glucose. And there are two main forms. There's amylose predominantly found in plants with alpha 1, 4 glycosidic linkages. And amylopectin, similar to glycogen, with alpha-1,6 and alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages. And again, this also confers an advantage to storing starch in plants. And lastly, cellulose. Cellulose is such a loner. It is a polymer of beta-glucose. What do I mean? There are many beta-glucose monomers covalently linked via glycosidic linkages. Which type? Good job. Beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages. Now, instead of being branched, as you saw in amylopectin and glycogen, unfortunately, cellulose is a linear polymer of beta-glucose. How sad. But wait, there's a huge comeback. Yeah. It has hydrogen bonds holding the linear polymer chains together. Wow. Yeah, glycogen and starch beat that. And these group chains are referred to microfibrils. This makes cellulose a very strong molecule. In fifth form, we saw how cellulose maintained the cell's integrity. Yes, being that structural component in the cell wall, making the plant cell withstand osmotic pressures. Mm. This also makes cellulose a well sought after raw material for the making of many products. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I wish you all the best for the aspects of biochemistry content on your CAPE examination. Remember to like, share and subscribe and see you at the webinars. Bye.